Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe for more EV content. Today we're going to dive a little bit into Xpeng or Xpeng, depending on how you call it. So if you're a fan of the brand, you're going to want to stick around for this. I just got back from Xpeng's global brand night in Hong Kong and there was a huge amount to try and process. We had flying cars, we had smart driving, we had new powertrain tech, and we even had some humanoid robots in there. Yes, you heard that right. Xpeng wants to do humanoid robots as well. And let's not forget, Xpeng is still a relatively young brand. It's probably one of Chinese homegrown EV pioneers. And for me, at least, I think it's the closest thing China has to Tesla. Now, I sat through five hours of media workshops, so you don't have to. So I'm just going to give you the most important bits. So let's start with flying vehicles, flying cars. So Xpeng has done flying stuff for a while. We had their kind of one man and two man flying vehicles, which are kind of oversized drones that can transport people. They even described themselves as Asia's largest flying car company. At first, I thought this flying car business was a bit of a kind of marketing and PR gimmick, to be honest, try as a way to kind of draw in investment from around the world. But it turns out that they're actually pretty serious about this and they're focusing on low orbit. That's under 1000 meters. While it all sounds like a bit of a pipe dream, they actually plan to start selling their first kind of car slash flying vehicle unit at the end of this year. That's right, at the end of this year, you will actually be able to buy a flying vehicle. Flying car, no, it's more of a vehicle and a flying vehicle together. So what happens is the vehicle drives to where you wanna go, the vehicle comes out, and then you can fly. When it comes back, it actually charges in the vehicle. Right now, it's a little bit limited. The range for one flight is only 20 kilometers. So actually, that's more like 10 because you have to fly back probably. But I think considering all of Xpeng's tech with batteries, with charging, it's not really the technology that's holding them back. It's actually regulations around this. Next up, let's talk quickly about battery and powertrain tech. And actually, Xpeng has had some big news recently about its future direction. Xpeng was actually one of the first brands to bring 800 volt architecture to kind of mainstream cars and cheaper cars and MPVs, kind of like bring this super fast charging to the masses. They continue to tinker with their batteries, with their drivetrains, with their engines to make sure that their cars are even more efficient. For me, we know that EVs can be powerful and I think horsepower is a bit of a throwaway, but to make them super efficient, I think that is key. I recently drove their new G9 and that was getting up to 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is not bad considering it's a kind of mid to large size SUV. And then there's their Mona on the other side, which gets around 11 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So this is incredible. Adding horsepower seems to be very cheap and very easy, but making something very efficient, whether that's by battery, whether that's by drivetrain, whether that's by aerodynamics, is more difficult and more thoughtful. Xpeng has also confirmed it will be doing Doing extended range electric vehicles so it's not going to be a pure electric brand in the future perhaps this is a reaction to the market situation in china where some of the best selling vehicles are electric range extended vehicles or perhaps it's a way to get around the bev tariffs in europe either way they think consumers want to have the choice of a erev and a bev so in the future they're going to offer their products with both of these powertrains. So let's talk about autonomous driving. And this is something which Xpeng is all the way in. They're gonna go very hard at this. They've been ramping up their efforts towards this and they have decided they're gonna go for a vision-based approach. So no maps, they want the ability to take these cars into any situation and for them to be able to figure out what is going on. I think for them, the priority is not being able to see more, but being able to process better and more intelligence, better chips. You know, I've used this XNGP in China. I think it's good. I think it's a little bit aggressive, but then that goes to back to what I mentioned before about it being for the environment in which it's driving. You know, in places like Shanghai, especially, people are very aggressive. You have to cut in, you have to be forceful, otherwise you don't get places. So it kind of stands to be a product of where it is driven, which I think is great. Hopefully it means it can match 
the way people drive in respective countries. Now let's talk about humanoid robots. Yes, Xpeng is really doing that as well. And when I said they were like Tesla, maybe they're going to lean into this. I don't know. Honestly, I'm a little bit skeptical when I see humanoid robots. I think we have Tesla to thank for that. You know, a lot of them are very early stage and I understand that developing humanoid robots is very difficult, which is another reason why I have to ask Xpeng why bother. I think it's a very speculative move and thinking like what place they will have in our future society. So not today, not five years, maybe not even 10 years, but in the distant future, how will they function in society and what value could they offer? The first step is to put these robots in places like the stores and the factory lines where they can do some menial work and more importantly have some interaction with humans and kind of varying tasks. Although I did kind of think that factory lines do have robots on them already and they're perfectly designed for their task. Okay, they're not smart, that's for sure, but they are super efficient at what they do. And then ultimately, just like their vehicles, these robots will gradually become more smart and more autonomous and be able to think for themselves. Is that a Skynet situation we see coming over the hill? I don't know. Anyway, let's see how this develops and if it is something that Xpeng pursues into the future. So at the brand night itself, we had the global launch of the new refreshed 2025 version of the X9. Just like their other vehicles, this one had the LiDAR removed, some small changes, a lot of small changes actually, over 400 to make this car even better, even more efficient, even more comfortable. This is a car which people overseas can get excited about. You should be receiving this in the near future. While I was at Brand Night, I actually had the opportunity to speak to a couple of people about the brand and about EVs generally to hear some of their insight. Here is what they had to say. So today I've got a special treat, which is Mark from Inside China Auto. Which uh, of these brands, uh, particularly from China, do you think are the ones to watch? Well, the obvious one's BYD. They are the biggest in terms of scale compared to all these other brands. Mm. And they're in, I think, over 80 countries now. So they seem to be really ready to make that international push. Outside of BYD, I'd say Xpeng is absolutely one of them. They've already been very successful in Europe. I think they made a decent start in Australia. And they're a brand that people know about now. So maybe two years ago, no one had ever heard of Xpeng. But I'm, I'm starting to hear people around the world who know what Xpeng is. So I'd say them, I think Zika, especially when they start to ramp up Link & Co as well in Europe, they'll, they'll start to be a bit of a force as well. Obviously in the, the domestic market especially, you're seeing that Xpeng has been, the sales have been growing exponentially uh, of late and they just hit some freight milestones in Europe. I think that they're, they're growing quite well in Europe. I think globally they have very big plans and what do you think is kind of key to the success of, of, of the brand like of Xpeng? Yeah, I mean I touched on it earlier in terms of the I think they've gone into markets quite modestly. They haven't promised too much. And I think they've probably over-delivered. I mean, as you said, the last five months, they've really turned things around in China. Five consecutive months of 30,000 plus deliveries. And they were kind of, they were struggling around 10,000 at some point but last year. I think, well, 75% of their current sales are this car and the, the one behind it, the P7 and the Mona. And they said in the presentation today that the big reason that people are choosing these cars, particularly the P7, is the intelligent driving. And I think people are realizing they can get so much car for very little money. And obviously now they've updated G6 and G9 as well, they become better propositions. I think they've also become a little bit more affordable. I think they're, just, they're giving, what they've done is, what they've been smart with is, they're giving people the cars that they want. So we just had a chat with Mark and now we're gonna have a chat with Riz from Car Loop, who is based in the Australian market. He has a very good understanding of everything that's happening in terms of new energy, in terms of vehicles, in terms of infrastructure. Um, and how are being, obviously with tonight, we're actually at uh, Xpeng's global brand night in Hong Kong. So how are Chinese brands uh, received or how are they being received and what is consumer sentiment towards Chinese brands in the Australian market? Interestingly, you know, if you asked this question two and a half years ago, nobody really knew the Chinese, were, Chinese brands were even making electric cars. BYD was just entering. Now I think a lot of the brand awareness and around Chinese EVs has been taken up by BYD and people understand that. So as newer brands such as Xpeng, which I think had their official launch in Australia in the last quarter of 2024, are starting to get picked up a bit. People are looking at it as a good technologically driven mm. sort of brands that are coming out of China that are driving electric cars that none of the traditional brands can deliver at the price that's coming in that many people can actually afford. The Xpeng brand night, global brand night here in Hong Kong. How do you think Xpeng is, 
is doing over there and or more generally globally and what do you think are the secrets behind uh, the success of a brand like Xpeng? Yeah, I think one of the key things is product and the quality of the product that you're bringing that you know Xpeng is bringing into the global markets. It's definitely you know looks at the incumbent but it's only already a step up from a technology point of view from user interface the material selection the way the cars look the way they charge everything that's in, involved in them so i think consumers early adopters understand that and they want an alternative they want something that's technologically advanced as we progress sort of into other newer models like you mentioned mona and g9 and x9 have been showcased at big car shows they're gauging interest to see what's going to happen if we do bring those cars into the right hand drive market like australia so I think there's the appetite strong. Um, obviously, it's still early days. There's a lot of, you know, most people in Australia and New Zealand don't know of Xpeng. That's just the reality of it. BYD is starting to become a bit of a household name, but at the same time, it doesn't say that in a couple of years' time, Xpeng with a broader product lineup aren't in that same spot. The technology is there, the quality is there, they look awesome. I think it's only a matter of time for Xpeng. So that is it for today. What do you think of the Xpeng brand? Do you think it is truly a global player and do you think it is going to go big? And do you think their humanoid robots are a waste of time or not? Make sure you leave your comments below. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.